Welcome, dear friends. This video is our introduction to Benedictine monastic life here at Mount Angel Abbey. I'm Abbot Jeremy Driscoll. I'm the 12th Abbot of Mount Angel. Our Benedictine monastery was founded in 1882 in the mid Willamette Valley in Oregon. But the original monks of Mount Angel came from Engelberg Abbey in Switzerland. And in the year 2020, Engelberg celebrated 900 years of continuous monastic existence. For 1,500 years, monks have been living out of the wisdom of the rule of St. Benedict. The life we live as monks here at Mount Angel is a continuation of a very long and esteemed tradition then. St. Benedict is considered the father of monasticism in the Western Church. He designs a way of life centered on Christ. He says, cherish Christ above all things, prefer nothing whatsoever to Christ. And everything we do in the monastery has that as its end. And while all who live according to the rule of Benedict have much in common, each monastery also develops its own particular ways of living that rule. So in this video, we want to share with you what I call seven rich ways of being a Benedictine monk here at Mount Angel. These ways are ways that we live and practice every day within our monastic cloister. And generally it's just us monks inside the cloister and so others don't see us living out the details. But actually these ways that I want to tell you about can be lived by any person anywhere. And the effects of such living are powerful humanizing. In Christ, at last, it's possible to be properly human. These rich ways are an antidote to the, to the turmoil and confusion and the extreme divisions that we're experiencing in our society today. In a minute, we'll look at each of the seven ways and share a little bit of how it's lived through our various works here at Mount Angel. As I said, all seven of these ways are practiced inside the monastery cloister by all the monks, or that's our ideal. But the effects of how we live within the cloister bear fruit and have an impact outside the cloister in other parts of our whole monastery complex. Rich ways of prayer, rich ways of life live together in community. Rich ways of deep, thoughtful reading rich ways of hospitality, welcoming all who come as Christ, rich ways of life centered on the Eucharist, rich ways of promoting arts and culture, and finally, rich ways of caring for the land and environment that support our life in so many ways. Living these ways with intention is what St. Benedict calls a school of the Lord's service. It's a disciplined way of learning to grow more deeply in our life with Christ and with one another in Christ. These are ways that anyone can choose to live. You don't need to be a monk in a cloister to do it. It comes down to paying attention to the little things that make up day-to-day -day life. Showing up and being present to one another, to those with whom we live and work. And it means seeking, as St. Paul urges, seeking things above. Rich Ways of Prayer The Liturgy of the Hours defines the rhythm of our life. Five times a day we meet in the Abbey Church to chant the Psalms, reflect on scripture, and pray for all our friends, benefactors, and the needs of the whole world. Benedictine monasteries have always opened their church doors to welcome all who come to join in prayer. We hope to welcome you as well. We monks at Mon Angel Abbey gather at the Abbey Church several times each day for prayer, pausing whatever other work we are doing for what is undoubtedly the most important activity that takes place on this hilltop. The presence of the guests, such as uh, retreatants or seminarians or, or day visitors, 
impacts my own prayer of the uh, divine office. Uh, in a sense, it is more uh, true uh, to what the uh, liturgy is all about. Uh, the liturgy is the work of the people. Boy, I'll tell you, I, I, I learned that uh, with COVID. We, uh, and it was especially true um, last year, that would, be, that would have been uh, Christmas of 2020. We had that wonderful uh, high mass, midnight mass, and nobody was there. And boy, did that make a difference. When you have a, when you have a full church, um, it, it just is so much different. There's, there's a whole assembly. I guess it's, it's a sense of the whole church praying. And when you have a full church, you, you have the whole church for us. You know, and that, that, that makes a, a, a big difference. Uh, e even when in, in office, I, I enjoy uh, like Vespers on weekends, especially because we usually have retreatants with us. And to, to have people are praying with us, that's, that's a wonderful feeling. I, I think my experience of God is, it's in, I think, in uh, First Kings, where Elijah was running away and he came to that cave. And then God was going to speak to him, and there was a mighty uh, earthquake, and God wasn't there. And there was a mighty fire, and God wasn't there. And there was a, a strong wind, and God wasn't there. And then there was a gentle breeze, and that's where God was. And, and I think that's always been my experience of God. I, I never have, never get knocked uh, uh, off my feet. But I think over the years, as I've reflected on it, I think, oh yeah, God's been present. In some way, God has changed me. Rich ways of life together. The monastic way of living doesn't mean we're all the same, but it does mean that we are on this journey of life together. No one goes to heaven alone. St. Benedict urges us to live with great patience for one another. No matter, he says, the defects of body or character in our brothers. He was talking about life in a monastic community, but this is true for the whole church. We either go to God together, everyone coming along, or we don't go. Over the centuries, the image of a monk has become that of a solitary figure on the search for the divine, perhaps to some on the search for an escape from the cares and troubles of this world. In the life of a Benedictine monk, that image is about as far from our reality as it could be. Every element of the rule of St. Benedict is concentrated on how to journey toward God together in community. I like to say when, when people ask, and I'm talking about life uh, together in the monastery, there's a lot of I'm sorry's given. That's just the reality. Uh, there's a lot of uh, forgiveness that happens here. Uh, maybe you had a bad attitude with a brother in the morning or something, and, uh, or maybe you were flat out pretty rude or something, I don't know. Uh, you, there's just so many opportunities uh, to say sorry. And, and, and just like families on the outside have to, uh, I don't want to say deal, put up with, uh, love one another, we have to do the same here at the monastery too. It's not always easy. In fact, it's fair to say that this constant living together in community is our daily cross and also our path to salvation. I like to call my brothers my tickets to heaven. Rich ways of deep reading. We may not think of many who lived 1,500 years ago as literate, yet St. Benedict in his rule dedicates several hours a day in the monk's schedule to Lexio Divina. That is, slow, prayerful, deep reading. Such reading focuses first on scripture, but from there spans outward to embrace the whole world in Christ. We read this way at Mount Angel, and you can too. Come spend a few hours in our beautiful library. 
designed by one of the 20th century's greatest architects, Alvar Aalto. Hold the books in your hands. Slowly, deeply, read in the silent company of whoever else is there doing the same thing. Notice how you feel after you've done this for a while. And then gently close the pages. You are in communion with Christ, the Word made flesh. None of these seven rich ways exists in isolation from the others. In our library, where we strive to create an atmosphere in which the practice of deep reading, Lexio Divina, can be practiced and experienced by all who come, prayer and communal living form the backbone. Our liturgical prayer consists of chanting all the psalms and other passages of scripture during the divine office five times every day. Each monk also dedicates time each day for Lectio Divina, that is, for reading of the scripture, when he can quietly reflect on God's word and apply it to his own life. By reading the Bible in this slow, prayerful way, the early monks soon realized that they were being made to ponder the meaning of the whole of creation and the whole movement of human history. Their literature grew into sometimes vast libraries. And what monks read now is not only the scriptural text, but ultimately anything at all in which they might search for the convergence of all things in the Christian mysteries. We share this practice with all who come to Mount Angel's Alto Library. And we also invite all who come to share in our life of common prayer by joining us at any of the hours of the Divine Office and the Eucharistic Liturgy. Rich Ways of Hospitality Outside the cloister, our two biggest works at Mount Angel are the seminary and the guest house. The seminary is focused on forming future priests with all that requires. The guest house receives all who come as Christ. That is, we believe that Christ himself comes in the guest. In addition, there is the brewery, which attracts its own set of guests who end up in conversation with monks, seminarians, and those who come for retreats. Altogether at Mount Angel, we experience the crossroad of worlds and cultures. Almost from the beginning of our being here at Mount Angel, we monks have held as primary uh, the work of welcoming and educating men preparing for priestly ordination. The seminarians studying at Mount Angel learn to read deeply and pray regularly according to the traditions of the church and to extend to all whom they meet uh, the Benedictine hospitality they experience here on this hilltop. The men discerning a vocation to priesthood at Mount Angel participate fully in the life of the hilltop. They have the opportunity to see and meet uh, hundreds of retreatants who come uh, each year searching and seeking for God. Others come for renewal and knowledge, and still others uh, for direction and peace of heart. Our Holy Father, St. Benedict, instructs us to receive all who come as Christ, welcoming all to participate with us in the hours of prayer, to spend time in the Alto Library, to soak up the atmosphere of this space of beauty, of silence, and deep acceptance of the fullness of life Christ offers us. Whoever comes to Mount Angel, and for whatever reason, we are blessed by their presence among us. Rich ways of centering on the Eucharist. This is the most important of our rich ways 
The Eucharist is not unique to monasteries, of course, but there are ways in which a monastic community like ours patterns its life so as to bring into effect a strong sense of the Eucharistic liturgy as the source and summit of the Church's life. No matter how, where, or when you connect with Mount Angel, Eucharist is what brings us together most deeply in the Spirit and in Christ. When you're looking for God, you don't look for Him as if He were some other thing in the universe, but you look for Him in the everyday, common experiences. And the liturgy and the Eucharist bring that out because it gathers all the community together. And there, God is really made present in a different way. But amidst all of that, it's always in a community. For those who haven't been to the Eucharist, the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass uh, for a long time, um, I think I would say to them that Jesus wants to be united with you. Uh, he came into this world uh, to save us. Uh, Jesus is uh, Emmanuel, uh, God with us. And you know, he is not a God who is far away in outer space, uh, but he is the Word made flesh uh, dwelling among us. And so I would just encourage those who may be far away from the Eucharist and the Mass um, to uh, open up your hearts once more, um, to come to Jesus, uh, say yes to that invitation uh, to be with Him and to enter into that uh, loving communion. Rich ways of promoting the arts and culture. Art and culture is what happens when you live these rich ways. That's why a monastery feels like something. To be at Mount Angel feels like something. It's a place 
with the spirit of the place. So it's not indifferent what the architecture is like, what art is placed on the walls, what music is chosen for each liturgy. Even how we dress creates a sense of place. All that constitutes the environment we live in creates a beautiful cultural environment, a unique Mount Angel monastic environment where the arts and culture are accessible to you and to all who come. There's a scene in the life of St. Benedict uh, where he is in his tower at prayer. He sees this world in a single contemplative glance in Christ. He sees all created reality for what it truly is in the sight of God. He silently gazes on God in loving adoration. As disciples of St. Benedict, we're called to that same loving gaze in our times, but our gaze doesn't end in a silent gaze. We're called forth to share the view of a truly human life and culture as it is created and sustained by the loving gaze of God. When we find things beautiful, then we are drawn to them. It, it lifts the heart and it becomes our longing. So beauty has a way of attracting and purifying the soul. That beauty is transformed into artwork that is placed throughout this entire hill in every building. And it's not an indiscriminate placement. It's a placement that is very cleverly and clearly determined to help us all to see the beauty that surrounds us in creation itself. Rich ways of caring for land and environment. Caring for the environment and the land on which we live comes naturally from the facts that monks vow to live in one place for our whole life. We take care of the place upon which we dwell and we cherish the natural beauty that surrounds us. In previous centuries, monks did lots of farming and were pioneers in the agricultural development of Europe. At Mount Angel, all who come to visit the hilltop and the Benedictine Brewery know what this means simply by spending time in this space, in this beautiful space. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands. A monk learns to see all of creation as the dynamic work of God. Who out of love creates all things and sustains all things moment to moment. With that awareness, Respect and care for our environment lets us be co-creators with God the Creator. For example, in landscaping, where human genius brings up the beauty that God builds into trees, shrubs, and stone. Or in gardening, where we nurture flowers for the church, herbs for the kitchen, squash for the table. Another good example of working with our environment is the operation of the Benedictine Brewery, where the monks brew beer in the traditional monastic method. We use hops from our own lands and water from our own well. The current brewery at Mount Angel dates to 2013, but we know that the original founding monks of this monastery counted a brewery among their works as early as 1885. In other ways, care for the environment makes us stewards of God's creation. So having goats and cattle graze our hillsides keeps them clean and orderly. That's good stewardship. Replanting trees after you cut some down is good stewardship. Composting leaves to fertilize the garden is good stewardship. I think of uh, so many of the classical Benedictine monasteries that are placed up on a hill uh, with great visibility to, for all kinds of marvels in nature. Certainly that's true here at Mount Angel. 
Uh, just the last few days, we've had some incredible sunrises that give us the vista of color and shapes of the hills and, and uh, the valley. And we see that the, the multiple colors of green and, and other shades that, 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 that come into view, which, which really uh, uh, promote some reflection on, on the beauty of nature itself and God's graciousness to us and, and allowing us to share all that beauty and, the, and to reflect on what it, it means in terms of our relationship with Him. St. Joseph was a, a quiet man and a patient man. Somebody who maybe didn't see right away the result of his labors. Often when we do physical work, we do see the result of our labors right away. But that also is a a chance for great humility and patience. I think St. Joseph well represents the person who is trying his level best to work honestly, diligently, in the service of something that is much, much greater than himself. And for that reason, our care of our landscape and environment here is not something that we try to be proud of. It's simply an inheritance that we hope to preserve and pass on to the next generation of monks and to the world at large. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to you God entrusted his only Son. In you Mary placed her trust. With you Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us to show yourself a Father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every You can learn more about Mount Angel and our way of life by visiting our, our website, but I hope also you come to visit us here at the hilltop, Mount Angel, and experience the living of these Benedictine ways firsthand. We, the monks of Mount Angel, look forward to meeting you soon. Thank you.